A reading from the Gospel of Luke, the eighth chapter. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had been gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with Jesus. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of Christ. My name is Lyle McKenzie. My pronouns are he, him, co-pastor of Lutheran Church of the Cross of Victoria, B.C., and assistant to the bishop for worship in the ELCIC, I speak to you from the unceded territory of the Lagwangan people, including the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wasanic nations. These are wild and wonderful words we hear on this second Sunday after Pentecost, as the church begins the season of learning to love and live as spirit-filled people of the risen and ascended Christ Jesus for the healing of the world. The stories are otherworldly. If you read the Elijah story from 1 Kings in your worship, you'll know Queen Jezebel has promised to have Elijah killed by day's end because Elijah took the lives of her prophets. Elijah's on the run, gives up, and asks only to die. Angels minister to Elijah, telling him to eat and drink to gain strength for the journey and to be encountered by God. Elijah reluctantly does, returning to the sacred mountain, but there he repeats the same desperate words that he alone is left and about to die. God does not encounter Elijah in a rock-splitting hurricane, not in an earthquake, not in a forest fire, but in sheer silence is the most common translation now. Although in the past it has included a still small voice or translations I saw recently, a quiet whisper or a faint murmuring as God passes by. In sheer silence, a whisper, a murmur, God speaks and says simply, Go. Go on, Elijah. 
Do what I am calling you to do. Wild and wonderful encounters by God are what we trust the Spirit is doing on any given Sunday in worship so that we remember God does so anywhere, anytime. We may be on the run, feeling threatened, looking for a haven, wondering if we are going to die, but ministered to by angels, encouraged to eat and drink at this table, to be strengthened for the journey. We are invited to be encountered by God, maybe not in a hurricane or earthquake or fire, but in sheer silence, only a whisper a faint murmur telling us, go, go on, do what God is calling you to do. Tomorrow, June 20th, is World Refugee Day. Many church communities across the ELCIC, often with neighboring partners, And Canadian Lutheran World Relief or other agencies have been involved or are involved in sponsoring refugees. The total number of refugees and displaced persons growing each day, especially since the invasion of Ukraine, is a staggering 85 plus million. Over 35 plus million are children. The number of people in need is overwhelming. But there are many, many stories of people coming to this land sponsored by ELCIC church communities, stories of lives changed forever, of families reunited, of new friendships formed, of safety, security, education, opportunity. Not without significant challenges. And more we need to do to welcome new people to these lands and address the prejudices and racism that are present and impact newcomers and those for whom this has been their home for generations and for time immemorial. Together, these acts of love and hope change lives, all our lives and the communities in which we live for good, for God's good purpose. Go, do what God is calling us, calling you to do for the sake of refugees and the communities of which we are a part, that all would have a safe home as God desires. That's the wild and wonderful story of the man from a city of the Gerasenes who meets Jesus as Jesus and the disciples land in the country. We heard his wild circumstances, living in caves, unclothed and unable to be bound, out of his right mind. The Bible's way of describing his condition is possession by demons, legion in number and name. But it is interesting to note that there was a Roman legion of soldiers stationed in the land of the Gerasenes, making us wonder if the man's possession reflects the possession of these lands and all the people by a legion of Roman occupiers. Similarly tormented day and night with attempts to bind and chain them that ultimately fail. And the tormentors know who Jesus is. In a wild encounter with Jesus, the legion of demons plea for their lives, asking to go into a herd of pigs as we heard. Animals unclean to the Jewish community, are they there to feed the occupiers? Jesus gives them permission and they run the pigs off the cliff to drown. Those charged with caring for the pigs are understandably shocked and worried, as are others in the community who who hear and go out to see the wild things that have been happening and find the formerly demon-possessed man sitting with Jesus clothed and in his right mind. And in what we can imagine are but quiet words, Jesus tells him, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he does so throughout the whole city, telling others how much Jesus 
has done for him. Tuesday is Indigenous Peoples Day on these lands. And just over two weeks ago was the anniversary of recovering the remains of 215 children on the grounds of the former Kamloops Residential Institution. And more and more children's remains are being located elsewhere across these lands. The process of truth and reconciliation continues with recognition that there is still much of the truth being uncovered about the attempted genocide of the indigenous peoples of this land. And that reconciliation, a complicated word that can be difficult, even maddening for some indigenous people, wondering when was there a relationship between first peoples and the colonizers of these lands to which anyone wishes to return? And when does truth lead to concrete actions for justice and redress and effective changes for the healing and well-being of indigenous peoples? and right relationships between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples with and in care for these lands. At the BC Synod Study Conference in May, retired Anglican Indigenous Bishop Barbara Andrews from the Territory of the People was our presenter. She spoke to us about the pathways to reconciliation as a spiritual journey that includes truth-telling, over cultures of lies and silence, healing of memories that include coming to terms with the past, removing its poison, mourning and finding a different, non-toxic narrative, pathways to forgiveness, including power passing to the victim and the survivor choosing the direction for the future, and pursuit of justice, including restorative justice, systemic change, and redress. Through sharing and storytelling in all of this, Bishop Barbara repeated, it is about relationships. It is about relationships. It is about relationships. And she spoke also about those who are reconcilers in our communities, those able to draw people together toward God's true healing, I wonder about the image of the person sitting beside Jesus and in their right mind. Is this an image for us, indigenous and non-indigenous people, whole and restored to land and community together? Jesus says to them, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Go, go on. Do what God is calling us, calling you to do for truth and reconciliation together. Maybe the wildest words today are those of Paul to the Galatians and to Christian communities ever since. Paul writes, In Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Wild, wonderful words. All of us, beyond every difference and division, one in Christ. The ELCIC has had three task forces meeting since the National Convention in 2019 on racism, on homophobia, biphobia, and transphobia, and on ableism. Each has reported to the National Church Council making recommendations on how the ELCIC can address systemic and structural issues of exclusion of minority persons and take action toward greater inclusion and justice and right relationships together as one people in Christ. The work has been difficult, with great thanks to all involved, and the recommendations will be challenging and require openness, honesty, acceptance, and willingness to give our best efforts 
toward the vision of the church that Paul articulates for us. And realizing this vision is only possible, not by law and punishment, but as Paul writes, by love and accountability and grace through faith in Christ. I imagine, even as we gather this morning and listen, that in a whisper, a murmur, or in the sheer silence, that God, Jesus, the Spirit, is calling us now, calling you now, to go. Go on. Do what God is calling us, calling you to do, in grace through faith in Christ Jesus, in the Spirit's wild and wonderful moving toward welcome and inclusion and healing and wholeness and truth and reconciliation and homecoming all together. Go and let it be so in all our relations. Amen.